Hi everybody and welcome to another piano review video here on the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. My name's Stu Harrison and today's video is all about the Casio PXS 1100. This is an ultra slim, ultra light, 88 note weighted digital piano from Casio. It is an update to their PXS 1000. That was a bestseller all around the world, certainly was a favorite of ours here. It's been several months of waiting for this instrument to arrive. Supply chain issues uh, run amok has certainly caused this to be much later than we wanted, but I think it's still gonna be relevant to people out there who are shopping for digital pianos at or under the thousand dollar mark, because this one is a beaut and it has been worth the wait for us. If it is the first time that you're checking us out here on the channel, please do hit that subscribe button and the notification bell if you like the video, if you find it useful, if you find it entertaining, anything in between. We'd love for you to become part of our community of users and please let us know what you think of the video. So without further ado, let's get unboxing this brand new PXS 1100 right away. So we're about to get the unboxing underway with this PXS 1100. I know that this piano has been on the market for at least four or five months available uh, in different parts of the world, at least as of uh, taping uh, this. Do we even say taping anymore? Filming, digitizing, capturing uh, this review. But because of all sorts of stuff related to COVID and supply chain issues and the fact that the minute that we even made this available uh, for pre-sale, they got gobbled up, it actually took a while before we got one available for ourselves that we could open up and have a listen. And there are definitely a few things about this that I'm really eager to check out. I remember when we first got the news reports about this uh, new model, uh, there was some very interesting specs that they were talking about the speakers. So I'm super anxious to hear whether there has been an improvement in the speakers uh, from this, uh, from the from the from the 1000 to the 1100. Also, want to hear uh, whether there has been, in fact, uh, an update to the piano sample because there was some language difference between how they were describing that. I mean, I know this is really in the weeds, but it's the nerdy stuff that makes a difference sometimes for people who are gonna be using this primarily as a piano instrument. Uh, so let's get this cracked open. Let's feel it, let's hear it, let's see it. And we're gonna tell you all about it. We got the power in the side. I'm sure that most people are gonna figure that out, but don't throw that out. So here we are folks, we've got the 1100 opened up. We are going to get this plugged in. We are gonna get all of this shiny plastic wrap taken off so we can sit down, enjoy, and start listening to this new beast from Casio. Be back in just a second. So we've got it unboxed, we've got it hooked up. We've got it wirelessly connected to the phone. We've got the most up-to-date version of the Cardana app, which you will need because the old versions are not so Bluetooth friendly. You'll quickly figure that out. Uh, and I've been playing it for a little while. I snuck that in, the magic of camera. You could just press stop. And there's a few things I can tell you right off of the bat. Uh, I remember on the 1000, we're gonna get the 1000 side by side with an 1100 in another video uh, very shortly. Um, but I remember being somewhat underwhelmed by the sound when you didn't have either the hall simulator or any of the surround sound modes on. It felt a little limp, it felt a little dead. And in sitting down and playing this instrument, I don't know, at about 60% volume with none of that stuff off, no hull, or on rather, no hull simulator, uh, no surround mode on, this is a very enjoyable 
acoustic piano sound to play. So we know from press releases and other reviews uh, that they changed the speaker box configuration and specifically, or at least according to uh, Casio, because I haven't ripped the speakers apart, but apparently they changed the material that the tweeter was made of and they also changed uh, the ability for the speaker to travel a little bit more when it's producing bass frequency. So I guess the idea is that it's just a slightly more full range speaker. They've improved the response in the very lowest ranges, uh, but I guess the highs also get a little crispier. They don't get quite as uh, adulterated if you're really pushing it, uh, so it's less likely to distort. This is all according to Casio. What I am sharing with you though is for whatever reason, and maybe those reasons, uh, without any of the sound enhancements or the digital signal processing that's going on, I'm enjoying the piano experience on the 1100 more than I did on the 1000. So there you go. So we know the speakers are different. The Bluetooth connection is also something that is new. Uh, it's not like they did much to the inside circuitry. This was a bit of a cheat, but hey, well, why not? They've included it in the box. It's this handy dandy little USB toggle dongle thing that gives you the Bluetooth connectivity. Uh, and so we've got it hooked up to the phone and it makes it really easy to go in and mess with some of these settings. Now you could have done that on the, uh, the thousand and most of the settings are the same, but you needed the cable. Eh. So it's just a little handier. Um, so you can get in there and you can edit uh, the, the digital signal processing, the DSP stuff. Uh, and that's on sound mode, the hall simulator, you can turn on and off basically your reverb engine. Uh, and you've also got your surround mode and there's just type one and type two. You can't edit the parameters on that. It's just kind of, you get what you get. The other weird thing is you can't have surround mode on without the reverb engine. Not sure why those two are, are like not mutually exclusive, but anyway, uh, one clearly builds on the other. Uh, so you can turn that on and you can get your standard hall simulation. Opera Hall.
Berlin Hall. British Stadium. Kind of get a bit of a woof with that one. Uh, anyway, Opera Hall, Standard Hall are probably the ones you're going to wind up using the most if you use that at all. And then you've got Surround Mode. which really just like crazy splits the stereo field. Like you play that and it sounds like that lower D flat is 10 feet further to the left than it actually is. So there's some stereo spreading going on there uh, to create kind of an exaggerated width to the sound. Uh, it's also got a chorus uh, that you can turn on there. Oh, I'm sorry, you totally can adjust the hall simulator depth. Um, well, there you go. Who knew? Just got to keep scrolling. Yeah, so you've at least got the option to affect the send uh, to that engine. Can't really change much about the parameters in there, but at least you can uh, affect that. So you've got those effects available and chances are you're going to be using that mostly on the acoustic piano sound. You also have the acoustic simulator and that's what gives you the parameters like string resonance, damper resonance, damper noise, key on, key off action. Uh, so it gives you a lot of the same parameters that some of the more expensive engines are giving you out there and they're, and they're really well done. I mean this is the synthesis that goes on top of the sample and this is still using the air morphing sample so this is kind of a multi-dimensional sample that they've done uh, and it's being delivered through 192 notes worth of polyphony. Since we've been talking about the speakers, we should mention that this is also 8 watts worth of power coming through each speaker. And as you can see, we are uh, picking this up both through direct line outs, uh, but we're also um, picking up the audio from the speakers because that's a big part of why somebody might be interested in the 1100. Yes, it's lightweight. Let, yes, it's slim. Those are all things that people have talked about. Um, but the fact that it delivers the kind of onboard sound quality that it does for the slimness and the lightness is really what makes this thing uh, a complete standout in the market, honestly. Um, the two other instruments that come to mind the most when I think about this piano from a uh, pricing standpoint would be the Roland FP10 and maybe the Kawhi ES110, kind of, sort of. Uh, and this onboard speaker performance uh, outdoes for sure just blows the FP10 away. You do not buy a Roland FP10 because of the onboard speakers. Uh, not going to be a thing. I mean, they're functional. Uh, it's there so that if you need uh, a, a sound reference out of the thing, it produces it. But they're nothing great. And I don't even think Roland pretends like they're anything great. You're buying that instrument in that case because of the sound engine and the fact that for way under $1,000, you're getting a PHA4 action. Triple sensor, escapement, blah, blah, blah. I've already riffed on the FP10 ton, so I'm not gonna go further down that rabbit hole. But back to the 1100. So we've got this grand piano sound, you've got the ability to edit that grand piano sound, and unlike a couple of other reviews I've seen, you totally have the ability to save these parameters um, once you edit them as favorites, but you do need to use the Cordana app to do it. So you essentially can save uh, these different parameter settings into these slots on the app and then when you open the app back up you can reload those slots and it'll uh, kind of load the instrument up with all those settings. There isn't a way to do it on board, that is, that is true, but if you're using this in conjunction with the app then you totally have a way to save I think four or five different uh, slots or different uh, scenes uh, to, to use the lingo from another manufacturer uh, in order to do that. So. Let's move on from piano and into some of the other tones. Uh, you've got 18 sounds in total, 
uh, when you are talking about the 1100. The Bluetooth connection, and this is true of most Bluetooth connections when we're talking about digital pianos, is a little laggy. I won't use the word glitchy because it hasn't glitched once, but it is a little bit laggy. Um, and so every time you're going into you know a different menu setting, it does take, I don't know, five or six seconds uh, for it to kind of catch up with itself and sync and, and make sure that the, I don't know, I guess the data stream is clean or whatever. So now we're just getting into our tone options and we are going to play through a couple of the other options. So we've heard Grand Piano Concert, that's what we've been hearing uh, this whole time. Grand Piano Bright. I'm gonna turn off that DSP stuff. bright but I could see using it for sure in some pop settings totally functional sound this is piano mellow and that is pretty mellow That is Grand Piano Mello. And then we've got Rock Piano. Ugh, I wish I thought of something other than that old time rock and roll anytime I saw that patch, but it's, uh, it's the only thing that ever comes to mind. Somebody please recommend a different song that I can like ingrain in my brain when I'm thinking about Honky Tonk Rock. I really beg of you, give me a suggestion in the comments, that'd be awesome. And then we've got Jazz Piano. That label makes no sense at all. Uh, I mean, the patch itself could be useful, but I don't know a jazz player on earth that would hear this and go, ah, I know what that is, that's a jazz piano. I mean, this is just kind of a bright piano with a chorus on it. I guess kind of like a West Coast Steely Dan sort of sound, maybe. Yeah, I could, I could see it. Uh, then we've got into electric piano. And I've always thought Casio did a great job of their roads. Yeah, 
digital e-piano. It's a little pingy, but still kind of nice. That's quite a useful patch, Digital Piano 2, 60s E-Piano. Kind of your whirly sound. And then all of the big hits, harpsichord. Uh, vibraphone. Strings one. That's actually probably one of the best string sounds on a keyboard of this price I've ever heard. Like, honestly. Uh, strings two. Just a slightly tighter uh, attack and decay in case you don't want it smearing all over your chords. And then finally, pipe organ. That's also quite nice. Jazz organ. Finally, electric organ one and two. And second one. Yeah, that's nice. So that's the full range of what you get as a tone. Now, any of those you can split or layer, uh, meaning two at once or left side, right side. Now, in terms of functionality, this is uh, definitely on the basic side. Uh, we are talking about um, a basic onboard recorder, uh, which is actually not bad. You can record straight to a USB key. Uh, and there is, you know, your, as long as you've got your guide with your 82 functions on it, uh, you can do things like format the USB and record a couple of different songs. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, reasonably useful. I honestly think that onboard MIDI recorders for most people are uh, kind of an antique function at this point because if you've got this thing Bluetooth to your phone, just hop on the App Store and, and like, pick up a you know free or next to free MIDI recorder and you'd be in much better shape. You got a great interface to be able to deal with it right on your smartphone. But it does have some onboard stuff. It also has quite a few classical tunes that are pre uh, kind of baked into this instrument so you can play through it. That's similar to the way it was on the uh, 1000. So that really isn't much different uh, on the 1100. Again, when we're talking about sound in this first big, big, big section, which we're kind of lumping all of the sound features into one, your big takeaways here uh, are that the uh, interface between the app and the piano definitely improved. Um, the onboard speakers and possibly an upgrade to the sample set on that uh, main acoustic piano is giving a richer, more complex playing experience than I was getting on the 1000. And it's got to be some combination of those factors. Really hard to break down which one it is. Um, but if that was kind of the biggest question that you had, if you'd already been familiar with the 1000 and you were considering the 1100 either as an upgrade or as a first time purchase, well, there are our conclusions. We're going to take a very quick break and be back and we're going to talk about this action in one moment. So we're back and going to be talking about the action. This is the smart scaled action 
uh, this action has received quite a bit of dialogue and discussion online for a variety of reasons. I'm not really going to uh, kind of dive into um, some of those points that have just been uh, beaten to death. Um, I'm just going to give you my fresh interpret, or uh, rather my fresh uh, perspective on how it is to play this action. You know what I think of it, uh, this, the key surface, all that sort of stuff. And then the few things that aren't perfect about this action, but still totally 100% enjoyable and functional. Um, so first of all, the texture on this, these black and white keys are highly textured. That's something Casio has been going for for a while. Uh, so it doesn't have a glossy look at all. People who have slightly uh, sweatier hands when you're playing are going to love this because there's lots of room for that moisture to get in and, and get out of the way so it's not causing super sticky, super grippy keys uh, to, to happen uh, with your playing and with your fingers. And the keys have a nice weight to them. I wouldn't describe them as particularly light. It's definitely not on the heavy side. If anything, it's a little on the light side, but really feels uh, very much down the middle in terms of its weight. Uh, I would compare the weight, or at least my impression of the weight, uh, something very similar to what you find on uh, like the Kawhi's KDP120 or the ES110. Definitely a little lighter than what you find on the Roland PHA4. Uh, the repetition speed seems good, and for uh, like a relatively basic action, it's also really sensitive. <laughs> For a piano that's as light and as compact as this, it also feels super solid to play. Like if you really lay into this instrument for something uh, that you can comfortably carry with one hand or one arm or whatever, uh, there's just no give to this at all. It's remarkably well uh, reinforced. Uh, now I said I wasn't going to get into the whole, uh, you know, some of the other talking points that it, that have uh, been thoroughly hashed through uh, on other videos and other channels, but I am going to bring one thing up about the black keys, and it's not the weight of the black keys. What happens when you take an action and you really compress it um, from a size standpoint, and uh, you squeeze the geometry so that the hinge that the black key is dealing with really uh, is uh, like literally right behind the key, there's almost no uh, extra room there uh, at all, is the closer you get to the very back of the black key, there's a lot less travel distance because you know you can think of this as a teeter-totter of course, right? So if this is your hinge, um, the closer you are to the hinge, you know, the less travel you've got going on. And because the black key, the back of the black key is that much closer to the back of the hinge because of the compressed nature of the action, uh, there isn't a, there's much less travel on that uh, point in the key than you might be used to on a full-size digital piano. The only people that I can think are really going to have an issue with this might be some more advanced classical players who either uh, by necessity, depending on the piece of repertoire, or just their playing style, really like to be inside the key bed. Most people who are either at a beginning stage or are definitely playing a lot of pop, R&B, most hobby players are going to be like a lot closer to the outside of the key bed where this is going to be a complete non-factor. And I wouldn't be recommending this instrument to an advanced classical player. Anyway, there's other options out there that are going to give you an action that's better suited for that type of repertoire than this. Um, but for 95% of the people out there who are the likely target of this instrument, I don't really think that's going to matter much. So we've got an action, it's not, again, and, and for the exact same reasons, it doesn't really matter that it doesn't have escapement either. The only people who are really going to be cognizant of that or even benefit from that, if there is a benefit, I've talked about that in other videos, um, would be probably more advanced players who are likely to be in the classical vein anyway. So super secure action, super solid action, and this is something that I don't think Casio... 
uh, gets enough credit for, certainly not online anyway, is just how reliable these instruments are, both mechanically and electronically. So we're, we've got a really secure, uh, well-reinforced action that doesn't have any give to it. Um, there's not any crazy clicking going on with, with this instrument. It's reasonably sensitive. And for most types of playing, uh, something that's going to feel like it's the right weight, uh, great for practicing on, uh, you know, great for gigging on even. So that's the quick bit on action. We're going to be back with a final wrap up and thought. Thank you so much for sticking with us. We'll see you in just a second. A final few points on this instrument. This instrument supports a triple pedal. Um, you can also get a beefier single pedal. I'd recommend one or the other because what comes out of the box here is the silly little plastic thing. Um, you know, it is what it is. You're not paying a lot for the instrument as a whole compared to other digital pianos. So I get that costs need to be cut somewhere. Just invest in a better uh, pedal. You will thank yourself for doing that. But it does support triple as well as um, sort of a larger, more substantial uh, single pedal. It comes with a music stand. We don't have the music stand on display, uh, but it's available straight out of the box. You can also get a matching stand with this instrument to kind of turn it into a slightly more permanent style uh, piano. And you can get that uh, in matching. This also comes in three different colors. You can get it in black, which you're seeing now. You can get it in white. You can also get it in a pretty style in red, uh, which I have seen and I'll admit I was I, I was quite impressed with the red. Uh, it gives it that sort of Nord, interesting, eye-catching look uh, right away. And last but not least, you've already seen them here, but just to make mention of the fact that this instrument comes with discrete quarter-inch audio outputs, which is a gigging keyboard necessity. Uh, nobody wants to be sticking some adapter in their headphone jack to send it out to a PA where it's uh, likely to get knocked, the jack loosens up too much, you're sending crackly signal, you, you, you defeat the local speakers. This way, you've got the speakers still on, you can send nice, clear sound, clean sound uh, over to a mixer. It's not the most usual feature uh, to find in instruments of this price point. For example, the FP10 does not have that feature. If you want to be using the FP10 for gigging, you have to do the silly little adapter thing, which is a real pain. So, you've got the quarter inch out, uh, which is great. You've got the Bluetooth MIDI. You've got one and three pedals. You've got matching. You've got onboard uh, recorder, which we've already mentioned. All of the other standard features that you could possibly think of, the metronome, the transpose, the split, everything. Quite the little instrument for the price. It is quite slender. And in comparing it to the uh, 1000, uh, certainly has delivered a more uh, rich, and to my ear, uh, yeah, just a more detailed, a more rich, and a, and, a, and a more dynamic piano experience than its predecessor. So definitely worth a serious consideration. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for tuning into the channel. My name's Stu Harrison, this is Miriam Pianos, and we hope that you will smash that subscribe and the notification bell because we would love for you to become part of a regular community. Whether you're in the market for a new piano, whether you just love nerding out at the stuff like we do, we'd love to see you back. We'd love to see you commenting as well. We try and get to as many of those as we possibly can. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.